This is likely how you see your city at night. And this is how I see it. Again, this is what you see. And this is what I see. This is Bike Bike Nudge Nudge. And in this video, I'm going to show you two urban design factors that affect mobility at night for someone with a visual impairment like mine. I'll even show you what happens when the lights go out completely. In my previous video, I shared a few clips of my city's fancy women bike ride. I tried to make the point that it is important to take into consideration the perspectives, needs, and limitations of others when planning a city. Due to my progressive impairment, I'm becoming more aware of when people like me are not considered during the planning process. One of my issues is that I don't see very well in low light. We recently passed the autumnal equinox, which means the sun is setting earlier and earlier every evening. The weather is still very nice at this time of year, but more and more, my vision limits my mobility due to the waning daylight hours. This is unfortunate because I used to really like biking at night. There's just a different feeling about riding at night that I really enjoy. So what two aspects of urban infrastructure affect my ability to ride my bike at night? And am I able to adapt so that I can still be included in my city or are there situations where I'm excluded completely? Let's explore these two topics using a recent trip I made after dark as an example. The first obvious consideration for me is lighting. I have to worry about being caught out after dark without my lights. It's not about having a small set of lights just to follow the letter of the law. Having the most lumens possible mounted on my bike means the difference between riding home after dark or looking for an alternative mode of transportation. Let's look at the worst case example for good biking infrastructure that becomes unusable for me after dark. My city takes pride in its recreational trail system and claims this recreational system is a major benefit to the transportation system. My counter argument to this is that the trails tend to go through parks and they are away from places where people want to be. Being in parks and so extensive means that these recreational trails can be poorly lit or not lit at all. Here's a demonstration of what it's like for me to use one of the recreational trails in my city at night. For this demonstration, I am at the top of a trail that I used to use all the time, um, but it is a recreational trail and it doesn't have great lighting. Up here, under the street lights, I can see a little bit worse than what the camera is showing you right now, and Lao Po, she can see quite a bit better. Uh, using the magic of Hollywood, I am now going to turn down the settings in editing so that hopefully right now, if my display settings are not too crazy and neither are yours at home, what you see now on your screen is about what I can see in the dark with headlights and street lights. Uh, I would like to point out that this trail was the official detour when a nearby road was closed. The road was closed for about 48 hours but the multi-use trail, sidewalk, was closed for two weeks. Uh, that road has street lights, so I could use it without lights, but as we're gonna see, I am gonna have some difficulty using this trail. So let's go down and take a look. I'm gonna put a video in video right here to show you what this trail looks like in the daylight while we head down. Let's go. Uh, now you can see that if I have my headlight and it's set to full, this is about all I can see. The camera doesn't work as well in the full dark, so what you see now is just a little bit better than what I can see. If the light gets turned off, if the light gets turned off, now what the camera sees is pretty much what I see. I don't see any, I see nothing. I can see a little bit of lighter sky between the trees up above, but I see nothing else. If I do not have my light, I can't use this trail. If I'm halfway down the trail and my light fails, then I'm lost. I cannot see, I'd be bumping into the stuff on the side of the trail and I'll be going off the trail all the time. Um, supposedly Lao Po can see everything. When Gary Gygax for D&D &D, uh, described uh, dark vision, I'm pretty sure that's what Lao Po has. But I cannot turn the display up in my processing to show you what she can see. 
So instead, I'm going to give her the microphone and she is going to tell you what she sees as she goes for a little ride down the trail and back. I can see everything. The, the path, the leaves on the trail, and uh, the, uh, this little poles around the road. Um, I actually can see most things. He cannot see, just uh, he does not realize that normal people can see everything. Just he doesn't. Okay, now I'll come back. I can see the, the moon with a little shadow around the trees. It's quite pretty. I can see the leaves shaking around. Yeah, I even can see the leaves, even that's in the yellow. So that's everything that Lao Po could see, and she rode up and down the trail, no problem. Um, I could see what the camera saw, her little blinking light disappearing into the darkness, and then she turned around and came back, so um, I could also hear her going and coming back. I'm basically a much less heroic daredevil right now with the lights out. So let's go back to the main video and continue my story. Lighting is also a reason I like protected bike lanes on main streets. This busy street has more, better street lights than many side streets. Lights from the businesses themselves also make the area brighter. Most protected bike lanes in my city are designed for commuting and are on side streets. This section has good lighting, while this section has poorer lighting. Something is wrong with the street lights in this area as they are completely off. Street lights are particularly important for me when I have to go around corners. My headlight is typically mounted to my handlebars, so it doesn't shine around the corner early enough so that I can see where I'm going. Wearing a headlamp or helmet mounted light helps with this situation, but I don't always have a second light. This ride was the first time I explicitly had Lao Po act as a guide. It did help to have her lead the way and have some extra light ahead of me around some dark corners. The second consideration for me is complexity. In the dark, Things appear suddenly out of my periphery more often than in full daylight. This is tied to lighting as I tend to concentrate more on what I can see in the light while having difficulty seeing things in the dark when I do look around. The complexity of this protected bike lane isn't actually worse for me in the dark than in the daylight. It may be really substandard due to being narrow and twisty in order to accommodate a few parked SUVs, but the twists are well lit by my headlight and the rather good street lighting. What I really mean by complexity is this intersection. My city added this good quality for North America bike lane to the street leading up to this intersection, but didn't improve the intersection itself. There are pedestrian lights to cross the busier street, but no lights for bikes or SUVs. There's just a stop sign for SUVs. This means people can only walk across the street when there's a walk phase, but SUVs can cross or turn left or right at any time. Where I live, bikes are considered vehicles, so I could ride across when there isn't a walk phase. However, it's easiest and safest to cross with the people walking across the busier street. The people crossing the street I'm on greatly increases the complexity of this intersection for me. There are no signals for them, which means they can cross at any time. So this is a very complex intersection, which makes it difficult for me to use. Fortunately, the lighting is good, even if much of it is bright SUV headlights directed towards me. Still, I'd rather this intersection be turned into a scramble, or better yet, the busy street be properly calmed or pedestrianized. Complexity is another reason why I prefer protected bike lanes on main streets. I hate to admit it, but the SUV traffic reduces complexity. People have been conditioned to accept streets as the domain of SUVs, so people are less likely to walk out into a street the busier it is with SUV traffic. On quieter streets, I found that people are more likely to walk into a bike lane mid-block and drivers are more likely to cross the bike lane without checking for people on bikes. Sensible cities have good design solutions to reduce this type of street complexity and I hope someday my city will actually implement some of these better design standards. And that's all I have to say about that. I hope you'll take away from this video that some people can have their ability to move about their city greatly impacted by little things. Taking into consideration that not everyone is completely able-bodied can result in better urban design that might be appreciated by many people. For me, it means paying more attention to lighting and complexity. I'm very fortunate to have someone like Lao Po who will be my guide. Thanks for watching. With this light on full bright, I pity the fool come the other way who's going to be blinded by it.